All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another live video in the Portrait Photographer's Resource, my Facebook photography education group. Today, I am very excited to announce an absolutely phenomenal, talented photographer, a fellow Magmon ambassador, and, and a fellow badass, if we're being real. Uh, I want to introduce you to Megan Allen. Say hi, Megan. Hello, hello. You, you flatter me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no problem at all. I mean, I'm just speaking truth. Uh, you're an extremely talented photographer. I've been following your work for quite some time, actually. Um, before I was even a Magmon ambassador, I think I've been an ambassador since 2019, but before I was even an ambassador, I've been following your work and I've been uh, absolutely thrilled with it. I love your use of color, uh, your dramatic images. Basically, it's like my style, but on steroids, and I absolutely love that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to say our, our styles are so similar. Like I've always enjoyed whenever your stuff pops up in my feed, I'm like, I, I know immediately it's yours and it's so iconic. So it's, it's nice to be here and, and get to hang out with you in your element because I definitely respect your craft and, and all the art that you're putting out as well. Well, hey, thank you so much uh, for saying that. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always really humbling when like people that I really value and look up to in the industry are like, Oh, I know your work. You're awesome. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Well, geez, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. um, well, Megan, um, for those of us who may not know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, you know, kind of like the, the, the two or three minute version, you know, how'd you get started? Uh, what you do, maybe a little bit about any sort of education stuff you do, anything you want to help, uh, sure. paint a picture of, of yourself, you know, with. Sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, so my name is Megan Allen. Um, I am primarily a wedding photographer based in Dayton, Ohio, but I do a lot of destination stuff. Um, in the recent years, I've started to kind of shift to more local, um, just because we ended up uh, deciding to expand our family. So trying to stay a little bit more local now, India is a little bit more of a hike than it was a couple years ago. Um, but beyond wedding photography, I work with Broadway actors a lot. And then recently I've started doing senior photography and then some, some volume sports stuff, which I'm starting to kind of like diversify and try to navigate, you know, new fields, but that's, that's been fun. Um, I got started, uh, it'll be 10 years now, 10 years. So 2013, um, started, uh, my business. And, um, since then I've been self-taught, uh, I've gone to two man studios, workshops, Cliff Mountainers workshop. Robert J. Hill, um, they've all been super instrumental in how I have decided to run my business and how I shoot. Um, and from there, I've just been really lucky to connect with amazing other creators in the industry who have taken me under their wing and helped guide me to kind of build my own style. So I'm really thankful for people in the industry that sat and critiqued my work, you know, and, uh, and made me a better photographer. So yeah, I'm a product of all of, all of everybody. So Absolutely love to hear that. Yeah. So that, yeah, you've taken some workshops, some really big names. Have you found a lot of, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this already, but have you found a lot of value in kind of taking inspiration from other photographers and incorporating it into your own or, or what would you say your relationship oh, yeah. is with the, with education that you've taken? Oh, dude, I like, I highly, highly, highly encourage everybody to get into education, find a way to better yourself. Cause you can always learn from someone like you're not you're never my one of the quotes that I heard is like, don't be the big fish in the pond. Like if you're the big fish in the pond, you need to get to a bigger pond, you know, um, and sit at the table, you know, to learn. So I love education. I love learning. Uh, I've done a couple workshops myself, but in terms of, you know, where I feel that I see myself when I first started out, I kept I, I made a joke of it. But I said, like, if I could be like if, if, if two man studios and Cliff Mountainer made a baby, like that was the photography baby <laughs> that I wanted to be um, because like, I love Cliff's use of natural light, the way he finds light. But then I love the emotional and in your face feeling and the color of two man studio. Um, so right. Lanny and Erica have been like hugely, hugely instrumental in like my overall um, aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. I love them. They're dear friends. And then um, I love Cliff. He's amazing. But just his use, his his light knowledge and the way he sees light is so inspiring. So those two, right. I definitely hope that if people see my work, they might see that you know, like those are the inspirations behind. Them. Yeah, but hopefully it's distinctly mine too at this point. So it, it absolutely is. Yeah, I mean, I think you have a really unique style for sure. 
Um, I think it's it's very recognizable, and I know one of your photos you. uh, a few years ago went viral. I actually, I, when you were giving an intro, <laughs> I showed uh, I was showing some of your photos. The fire <laughs> photo. Yeah, and the fire photo exactly. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was so, that was super sure. cool. But a, a story for another time, yeah. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I've met Cliff before uh, a couple times at WPPI. I just met Lanny and Erica for the He's first time dude. this past year. Really, all really talented photographers. Oh um, so it's cool that you can pull and amazing human beings. Yes. Amazing human beings. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, so before we jump into the image critiques, uh, on a more personal note, um, I know you're really big into like gaming, right? What are, what are, what are you playing right <laughs> now? Oh man, dude. Um, I am playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, and I'm like obsessed. everyone. Okay. I love oh, that. I love it. <laughs> and then like, I'm also, so I, like, I have a couple buddies that I always play Call of Duty with. Like that game can be so like off the, like it's so dumb and it's so broken, but like you just keep going back to it. <laughs> so actually they texted me before I hopped on here and they're like, you playing tonight? And I was like, I'll play after the critique. Party. So I'm always nice. down to pew pew. So <laughs> I, I hear you. If I ever get more time in my life, I, I really want to pick up like Warzone or something so I can actually start playing. Because oh. I do have so many friends that play, you know, recreationally. So yeah. I, I would love to really get into yeah. that again. Because I used to be a very big gamer when I was younger as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like I built this studio that I'm in right now to like stream and yeah. I haven't streamed. So I'm like, it's going to be for <laughs> educational purposes. I'll do educational videos and it hasn't happened yet, but it's ready now. It's ready. Well, you're, and you can so. test it here in the portrait photographer's resource. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The light, the light looks great. Backdrop looks phenomenal. So super stoked. Perfect. Um, well, um, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, and you've never seen one of these live image critiques before, basically what it is, is I give you all the opportunity to submit a photo for Megan and I to look at. We're going to go through it. We're going to say, you know, maybe some things that we like about it, but ultimately, um, we're going to give you some information on how we feel you can, um, improve on the images, right? That's, that's the whole thing here is we're trying to become better photographers, um, you know, we're not going to try to sugarcoat anything. That's the whole point of this. Um, we are at the end of the video. We're going to randomly pick a winner to receive a free 20 by 30 canvas from pro prints. So make sure that if you guys want the chance to win that you stick around, um, because I want you to claim your prize essentially. Um, well, Megan, are you ready to go? You ready to rock and roll and do this? I am. I am so ready. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and I lost your audio. I lost your audio. Oh, there we go. How about now? Yep. Okay. For yes. some reason, the mic got muted. I don't know why. Um, okay. That was really weird. Um, so this Wait, first, yeah, this, that was weird. I don't know why my e, my e cam, my streaming software just randomly decided to mute me. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> Um, you should all hear me. Yes, we're good. Okay. So this first image comes from a regular submitter. This is from photographer Locke Lee, who's based in Seattle. Um, I'm going to let you uh, jump jump in and just kind of give me your initial impressions, Megan. Let me know what you think of this. It's clean. It's lovely. Uh, it's well composed. Um, this is one that, I mean, is very editorial. And I could see this in a bridal magazine. Um there's nothing necessarily that I would ne like point out as wrong um, if I really wanted to complain. Um, and you can't control the light, but you know the hot spots on the on the on the building behind him. Um, they're evenly right. lit. They're beautiful. I there's nothing about this that I would I would necessarily say is wrong. Or I don't know. It's a solid shot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Locke is definitely a very talented photographer. I, I, I think one of the issues I have with this photo, and it's again, it's hard when you're taking photos at such a high level, it's really hard to like critique. Um, 
a, a photo like this, but I think for me, I, I'm seeing a lot of like distractions. You know, there's just a lot going on in the scene. Okay. So I almost would suggest, hey, like shoot this at like f one four or shoot this with like a, a really long telephoto to get some compression just to kind of cut out that background blood uh, gl- uh the clutter a little bit or yeah. you know reduce some of those highlights on the building like you mentioned um because there are yeah. there is a lot going on um yeah. so that would probably the only other thing that i would say is connection yeah because they aren't connected at all so i would like instead of having the the one bride's hands just like I don't know if you can see my hands, but like this, the one on yeah. the right, I would have her put her hand on the other bride's shoulder. Just some kind of human connection. I always right. love to see a touch of some sort. I Yeah, I would completely agree with that as well, actually. Um, I do like how they're posed. I mean, they are posed yeah, very well. Lovely. You can tell they're probably professional models, um, but absolutely, yeah. there, there's just really, there's a disconnect there. Um there we need a way to tie of them to tie like together we need to tie the whole image together and I, i'm not really feeling it in that way um but other but again you know like i was telling you about before we jumped on this live video you know there's some photos like this that are so good that you want to like find right. something wrong with it <laughs> and it's <laughs> right you're like well this this and this so yeah like i my my issues are nitpicky i would agree with the compression um i don't think we need to see the background as much um right. so i mean i don't know what this is shot with i would get like a 50 um can you see exif uh you know i can't um actually okay. uh, i give people the opportunity to like give some comments on how they created the image and uh lock didn't share anything so i'm gonna assume okay. this was probably okay. shot maybe at like yeah like at 50 or 70 millimeters or something like that yeah yeah so um well cool Again, um, it's a solid image yeah, I totally yeah, I totally agree. So, um, well, Locke, as always, I really appreciate you submitting. Thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, and uh, oh, you know what? I just realized I I'm a little disorganized here. But um, this next photo, as far as the names, but don't worry about that. Um, this next photo comes from photographer Critter. 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 He goes by Critter. His real name's Chris, but he goes by Critter. <laughs> Critter. I like Critter. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of so, cool. Um, so right off the bat, to me, there's a ton of headroom in this that is not telling a story. Um, okay. I would bring it down to see more of the crowd because to me, the crowd is more interesting than a handful of lights. Um, I love that he's got all of the body parts of, you know, the hand flying out and stuff is great. Um, he didn't cut anybody off, which is good. But like I said, I'd like to see more of the crowd and not quite as much headroom. Um, yeah. Like I, cause you're cutting off the legs of the, of, of the talent as well. Um, so yeah, like I just think bring it down a hair, which I know is tough because you're in a crowd. I can tell he's in the crowd, you know, he's probably got his camera up, you know, but, um, that would be the thing that I, that stands out right off the bat. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. ISO yeah. wise, you can tell there's a little bit of noise, but I mean, that's going to happen at a concert. So yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think to expand upon that a little bit more as well, you know, yeah, maybe, sh maybe incorporating the crowd a little bit uh, more in the foreground or something would make a stronger image, give a little bit more context to what's happening. I think for me, probably what I would recommend is all their faces in some way are they're either cut off or you're just not seeing their full face. Right. So the main singer, you're only seeing like the profile, the guy on the left, you know, he's getting, he's being blocked by the microphone, the drummer, and then the uh, bassist. It looks like you can't even see their faces at all. So, you know, I, I feel as though he could have maybe chosen a better angle or waited until the singer turned a little bit more towards the camera. So we at least could have seen his full face. Um, I'm yeah. sure, you know, if he was continuing to take photos of this scene, he, he got more than just this. So maybe there's a better one in the mix, but right. as far as, um, we're just critiquing this photo, that is what I would probably like to see a little bit differently. Yeah. Cause if you, if he drops down, then, and, and kind of shifts just a hair, you could almost, and I'm pointing at this cause I'm looking at. A, a different camera so i apologize or a different monitor i apologize no worries. um but yeah um if you if you look at where the guitarist with his hand up is if you're down and shift to the right just a hair you could frame him with the mic 
if you see what I'm saying. And then the mic is only cutting through his arm, not through his face. Um, right. And then you've got kind of a framing point as well, which would be nice. Um, totally. And I mean, again, like you said, you're not, uh, we're not seeing the entire set, but the other question when, which you brought up too, is like, not mm -hmm. like no one necessarily has like a key purpose in this photo, except for maybe the main singer. So I would like to see a different crop. Like mm -hmm. I would almost bring, I would crop in and crop the far guitarist out, honestly. Yeah, so where it's would, a tighter image of the guitarist and the, and the singer. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that would be again. a good, I think that'd be a good thing to do. My only problem with that suggestion though, is if you do crop it too tight, then he's looking right outside the frame. Um, as this opposed is to into the yeah. frame. So just something to think about there. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, um, either way, critter, thank you so much for submitting this. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Great. just keep next time you do a cool concert like this, uh, keep a couple of those things in mind. And I think you'll get a, a rock image, so to speak. <laughs> what <else? laughs> Oh man, I would make a really good dad. I, all I was right. Say, dad for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Awesome. Well, Hey, this, uh, next photo comes from another regular submitter. This comes from Radon Burton. This is wild. This is wild. She has a really interesting way of, of doing photos like this. Um, I, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Cause you're like, okay, there's more hands here than two. Yeah. <laughs> so, so first, the first thing that it strikes me as, um, is I don't know if they've heard of Brooke Shaden, but Brooke Shaden is an incredible, like photographer with doing stuff like this. So like the minute I see this, I'm like, oh, this is totally like up Brooke's alley. And it's a, it's executed well, like mm -hmm. you've, you've done really well with the lighting on all of the arms. Um, it looks real. I'm sitting here, like trying to figure out which one is actually her arm at which point. <laughs> I'm right. like, this is cool. Um, I, I like it. I like it. It makes me ask questions. Like I want to know what, like how she's feeling. You know what I mean? I really like it. Um, I feel like her mascara might be streaked. So then that makes me think like, what's she thinking? And I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but I do like the heavy makeup. Um, it works really well. Um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I like it. Um, I would crop her just a hair um, because the one side is a little tighter than the other. Yeah, she's I not agree. completely centered. Um, so I would bring that over just a hair. Um, the seams on the back, um it looks like you photoshopped out some of the seam but obviously not it but like directly behind her so i personally would say either leave it all or take it all out um but that's just a personal preference sure um, sure okay those would be my two things like right off the bat fair enough fair enough yeah um so much to love about this photo i i think yeah. and i'm because it's so good i'm gonna kind of like look at this from a competition perspective because it's on, it's on that level. Um, and I don't know if the, if Radon had any, uh, communication with her client about wardrobe choice, but I'm not, I'm not sure I'm digging the wardrobe choice for this type of photo. You know what I mean? Like, I almost feel yeah. like this type of photo would be really even more powerful if it was actually like an artistic nude image. Um, yes. Like, that would be way more powerful because you see the arm in the background that has the sleeve a little bit. It's a little distracting to me that it, it's kind of, it kind of yeah, throws off. Piece. Yeah. It kind of throws off the dynamic of the image. Um, so I feel like, uh, like this photo redone, like, like I said, like as a nude image or even just some sort of different clothing choice, I think it would really bring that up to a completely different level. Yep. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely tells a story though. I love the smeared yeah. mascara. It's uh quite interesting indeed. Yeah. I like this is one I would sit and look at for a while. You know right. what I mean? Like so, a lot of images you just click through, but this one I sit and I'm like I could look at this for a while and see it so many different ways and that's a that's a good feat. That's a good thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um yeah, that's I and I do like the the color grading too. It's kind of like this like yeah. burnt like right. burnt brown kind of 
to feel warm. Too. Yeah, but I I'd like I and I, I agree. I agreed though. I would like to see this a little bit tighter. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for Don for submitting as always. Um, I'm, and looks like you just saw the comment, but uh, apparently Dan can smoke you in Call of Duty. So <laughs> he, he's talking big trash for never <laughs> playing with me before. <laughs> oof. Oof. All right. Listen, well, man, we're we're gonna hop on after this critique. So. Oh boy. Find wanna... me out there. Meet me yeah. outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, I'd, I'd love to see that. I don't know. I, my money's on you, Megan. Just knowing what I know about you. I mean, you built a whole room just for streaming video game stuff. Like, my money's on you. <laughs> Committed. Commitment. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and move on. This next photo comes from photographer DJ Clark. Um, let's see. DJ here said that he um, took this at the Photo Creators Conference. This was taken in salt water in a very murky pool um shot this at 1 125th of a second f 3.5 800 iso used nan lights nano lights nan lights for light Use i don't know what those are. Yeah. they're dope i have a few they're awesome okay i actually don't know what those are yeah. is it like nano bots so it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a led tube like so oh. i can see it that was going to be the first thing that i pointed out but like it's a tube of light and they come in different sizes. So I have um, eight four foot ones, but then I have two like little 10 inch ones I use for detail shots. Um, gotcha. They're amazing. So, gotcha. Yeah, they're super cool. You can change them to any color um, across the Kelvin or um, RGB spectrum. It's great. So. Okay. Um, well, cool. So yeah, uh, moving on to the image. I, there's, I'm, I'm I, not really sure how I feel about this. I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of things that I would comment on, um, okay. and, I, and I'm going to say it from a a place of like I want to see you take the take your photography to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, I would take away the vignette immediately. Um, is it a very dark vignette? Yeah, um, unless that was like a lens that you had on or something like that. But that's a very dark vignette. So even if it is something that you had on your lens, I would crop in to get rid of. It's probably an um, underwater housing is what I'd guess. That's know. what I'm thinking. Um, so the vignette was the housing. Yeah. So, I mean, I would crop in to get rid of it or I would use, this is a time that would be great to use like Photoshop's generative, uh, generative fill, um, the content aware fill. Right. Um, I've used that before. If there's like a weird thing that I can't, you know, I, I can't crop it because it'll mess up the look of the photo. I'll, I'll go in and use the, the, the fill and it, it's amazing how good it is. Um, I would also have tried to do something with the background. Um, I can tell they had a backdrop behind her, but you didn't shoot it straight on mm -hmm. and it's messy on the, on the bottom. Um, yeah. So again, this is like, and I've, I haven't shot underwater photography. I have friends that do it, it's hard. Um, but it's I hard. know they, they, it's hard and I give kudos to anybody who does it. Um, but I know they spend oodles of time in Photoshop post mm -hmm. because nothing looks good straight out of camera um, or it's right. very rare. Um, so, I mean, I would crop more from the right end to get rid of that nan light um, mm -hmm. right off the bat, or at least some of the haze. I know you said it was murky, but I would use dehaze in Lightroom to try to like get that down a bit to kind of pop her more. Um, I would spend a lot of time in Photoshop like cleaning out the background because it's very distracting. Um, and I think you'd have a solid photo if you didn't have those distractions. I also think this is an image that if you took it to black and white, it would take away some of the distractions um, because okay. then you could like pop the tones for her, you know, um, push the whole thing black behind her and then you don't have to worry about, you know what I mean? Like there's things that you could do and then keep the ripple like I've seen that before. Um, an amazing photographer doing underwater photography is Emily Sherman. Um, check her out. She's awesome. Anna Wynn as well does underwater photography. Um, she's phenomenal. Um, but those would be two that I'd be like, check out their work and see how they're like making the backdrops work. Um, another one is Regina Wamba. Um, she does stuff for a lot of book covers underwater. Um, and she, like, I've went and watched her do her thing. It's crazy, but she'll hop in the pool with them, but she has a whole backdrop just like this, but then you just have to then go into Photoshop and clean it all up. Um, so this feels to me very straight out of camera. And I think yeah. with a little bit more time post-processing, it could be very special. 
but you've just got to take the time with it. Sorry, right. that was long-winded. No, no, that's, I mean, I think that's exactly <laughs> what this is all about is giving feedback exactly like that. And that's the kind of stuff our submitters are looking for. So, um, yeah, really, uh, there's not much I could add to what you said. Um, maybe, uh, you know, <clears throat> just trying to choose your angles a little bit more carefully. I mean, I know it's hard in an underwater situation like this, and this is obviously in a pool. I mean, you can see the backdrop with the, the chain on it. You can see, um, you know, the, the bottom of the pool, the top the light on the side. So I think just a little bit more practice is, is going to really help with this. And obviously, uh, you know, getting that practice in is what's going to help make you a better photographer. And that this is, this kind of comes across to me as like almost like an experimental shoot. Like, huh, like, is this kind of something I would like to be interested in? Or, you know, or am I good at just taking photos above water, <laughs> you know? Um, so thank you for submitting DJ. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, three. He said there's three photographers in the pool at a time, so I'm sure it's a little challenging to kind of oh, yeah, shoot over each other's uh, heads or, or whatever. Um, but yeah. yeah, well, super cool. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you, DJ, as always, for submitting. Okay, oh. this next photo comes from photographer Andrea Deanda. Um, let's see. Oh, she and she said when she shot this photo, she waited until the lady's hair lined up with the bride's dress. I see. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So it is a very slow read. If that was what was intended, I like yeah. that your thought was there, mm -hmm. but it's a very slow read. Um, I think if that's what you want people to see, you need to burn everything else down. Like. Yep everything um a vertical crop as well um yep and even then that. it would yeah it would still be tough but if you vertical crop and burn everything down because every other per i was reading this trying to find the story um and and it's okay if a if a, if a image doesn't have an immediate read but you don't want me to spend time searching either um so that would be that would be my initial takeaway is vertical crop, burn everything down. Um, I like the thought. I like that you're thinking out of the box. I like that you're seeing those multiple stories and layers because that's awesome. And it's hard to do like that. That's what's mm -hmm. hard to, to master. Um, yeah. I think this might have been a miss. You know what I mean? Like on this intention, but I like yeah. where your thought is going. with it. Yeah, I think it's hard to tell to what exactly that element in the foreground is. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's yeah. a photo I'm thinking about, um, and I'm sure maybe Even. Andrea, Andrea took a little bit of inspiration from it as well. You know, there's that dog that won that fearless award. Steve, yep. Stevens. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. He's awesome photographer, but yes, yes. Yeah. There's a, there's a photo where like there's a bride running towards the, the water on a beach. And then there's a, like a white poodle in the foreground or like a Shih Tzu or something like that in the foreground. Like poof. Yeah, yeah, and at it's fir at first you're kind of like, wait, what? And then you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a dog because there's a leash. There's, you know, the the ears. There's there. context. There's context yeah. exactly here. There's no. Yeah. There's I'm I'm failing to see the context a little bit, and it, and I think that's why we're we're challenging or we're, we're struggling with this image is because there's not a lot of context and it's kind of confusing yeah. what's going on and there is a lot going on. So, um, yeah. if you know, I would recommend yeah maybe burning some of the, the, the sides, getting rid of the, the ceiling that's kind of bright, um, do a vertical crop. And I think that would be a much stronger image for sure. Yep. So cool. Um, that's, that's the main thing. Um, thank you, Andrea, as always for submitting, um, this next photo. Oh boy. Okay. Make sure you roast Dan. this one. This one comes from. Oh, it's Dan trash. Dahlstra. Throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that too. This is some major trash. Oh, throw it out. This is just. Ugh. Okay. Oh, let's Dan. See. Dan. Dude, Dan. I know Dan, so I can I can be like I can be hard on him, and I don't I, I don't get nervous. So, um, okay. So this is one thing that I always this is this thing for me. It might not be for anybody else, um, but I always want. If, if I'm going to do a silhouette of, of a couple, I don't want their faces touching because then it becomes Same. like a weird blur schmoosh. Yep. Um, so 
especially with their height difference, he kind of humps over. So I would, I would not have them be kissing in this photo. Um, but you obviously need some movement. So I almost would opt for him to have like picked her up underneath her butt and like uh -huh. have her kick one leg out. You know what I yes. mean? And so she's yes. up over him looking down. And then that way you've got a little bit of movement because there's, he's going to be leaning back. She's leaning into him. There's movement in that leg. It's silhouetted on that orange, but it's not, their faces aren't touching and they're not a blob. That I think would be a much stronger image. And, and then I do think that that's like to the point that it's competition worthy. Um, cause the right. color contrast in this is like, Dan, you know, I love you in your color contrast. So, um, the color contrast in this is phenomenal. I love this. I love this picture that you, I, I love it. I would yeah. just, that would be my one week. And if the other thing, if I was going to be super nitpicky, um, uh, that line in the middle, I would Photoshop that out. Like I would just, that's a quick, like yeah. clean up that center yeah. line. Um, that takes all of two seconds. So I would clean that out so that it was just a clean across the board. Um, yeah totally but those would be my two things but yeah okay yeah um to give a little more context to this photo uh, according to dan he used one flash with a mag sphere and a full cto gel placed behind the couple pointed up um and they're standing in okay. front of a picnic bench that had a curved roof to provide shade and the roof reflected that orange light back down and That's around perfect. the couple it was taken at white sands national That's monument perfect. so that because i was wondering like how mm -hmm. how was he able to get that light like kind of on the ground as well yeah um so that That's is dope. yeah that is really well really cool mm -hmm. good job That's sir well we can be friends <laughs> we can be friends you won't beat me in cod but we can be friends <laughs> yes yes um well awesome um Thank you uh, very much, Dan, for submitting this. It's always great to see your work. Um, let's go ahead and move on so I don't have to look at this trash anymore. Uh, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, this next photo comes from Brian Green. Um, def clearly, I mean, is this a portrait? That's the question. I mean, it's a mammal. It is, right. So, it is a mammal. Yeah. So, I mean, I love it. I think that more compression and zoomed in, it's going to be more powerful. Um, just, just as a suggestion, like, just to like, I love to reference so that people can get inspiration. So um, Colby Brown, if you haven't seen his nature stuff, go look at it. It's unbelievable. Um, but he goes to Costa Rica a lot and photographs a lot of monkeys um, and his work is unbelievable. And so when I see this, I'm like, I need you to zoom in. And I know that photographing nature is like insanely tough. And a lot of times our lenses are not like nine times out of 10, most people don't have the like 400 that's gonna reach out to grab a monkey that's far away. I get that. Um, but I would love to see a little bit more compression on this um, just to where I'm seeing him more. Um, yeah. Or maybe even just crop in, but I but I love, I love the leaves around him. So I wouldn't wanna lose that. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I would just zoom in to get to get more of his features because he is a mammal and like they have so much like amazing emotion in their faces. I would almost have waited maybe to see if he would turn a little bit to get more more of that face because I really feel like monkeys have so much like intelligence in their expressions that that would have been cool to see too. Yeah, I, I think the, re the really just the, the limiting factor here is just lack of equipment. I mean, he said yeah. it, he took this when he was on a trip to costa rica so i mean i'm ass I'm assuming he's not bringing a 600 millimeter lens around with him right you know? i'm guessing so, this is a 70 to 200 maxed out pro exactly would be, um, would be my guess yeah i mean you can tell it's out of it's out of focus um it or it missed focus you know you if you look at the branch yeah. to the monkey's right it looks like it's focusing right on that that that'll branch um yep. and then the, the crop it's just very center weighted so it's it's definitely yeah. breaking that rule of thirds rule um so re really just technical stuff I i'm not a big fan of the angle either you know kind of going down right. up it's you know it yeah. it's it's just like a casual capture to me i wouldn't necessarily right. cl classify it's like he was as... on a hike and saw it and yeah. snapped and yeah kept it moving definitely but brian um thank you again though for, for submitting this um it's kind of nice to break oh up a little bit some of the photos a little bit and, and see something yeah. that um you know, see something different. So thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So moving on here, this next photo comes from photographer Mario 
Jar Jamario, Jar Jar not Jamario, Jara Mio, Jara Mio. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is what I would guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, Weigh in in the comments if you're here. Audio. Yes, yes. I want to know. <laughs> so Mario actually emailed um, me uh, or messaged me a couple photos from this photo session because he was really excited about it because I think this is one of his first ever like paid gigs. Um, nice. So he, yeah, so he was really stoked about that he landed this job and he, I could tell he was a little nervous, you know, because he was asking me some questions before the shoot. Oh, what gear should I bring? What should I do? What should I do? Uh -huh. um, and I saw the set and as a whole, I think he did actually a pretty good job. Um, so I definitely can yeah. commend, can want to commend him on that. Um, <clears throat> as far as this photo's con, this particular photo is concerned, I think the big thing for me is, you know, he cut off the the mom's shirt on the left, um, and that yep. to me is a, it, it just makes the the whole balance or the the photo feel a little unbalanced. It throws me off. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that would be my biggest. Then, yeah. Yeah, my biggest suggestion would be to, uh, you know, include that or crop. I wouldn't necessarily – Yeah, crop her in. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but it's better than I think um, – yeah. you know, I think it's better than and not having it. So, um, yep. yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say is, is that crop point. Um, the other thing is um, you cropped at their wrists, and I don't necessarily ever love that either. Mm -hmm. Um like if this was your first paid gig dude like kudos because my first paid gig did not look this good it was <laughs> sus so <laughs> they should not have paid i should have given the money back um so you are like worlds ahead um i love this um i'm not sure what gear you have um but i would almost shoot it at two eight if you didn't um yeah. Just because I don't think you need that background as in focus as it is. Um, it's lovely, but you don't need it. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, I would have given them just a little bit more room to breathe. And the one thing about portrait sessions like this that I've, I have come to realize over the years is give more breathing room than you think you should just because they love to crop these things in weird crops when they print off. Um, yeah. Just because and I don't, I highly recommend that. Um, so yeah, so I would give them a little bit of breathing room. So then like when you want it as an eight by 10, but they decide they want a five by seven, they can still do that and they're not losing anything. Um, right. that was a big pain point that I had to learn, you know, from family sessions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, their expressions are great. Um, you can, they're authentic smiles. Like if this was my family, I'd love this picture. Um, so yeah, I would just watch your crops and then just give it a little bit more breathing room and then the background a little bit more um but these are great expressions and everybody's like you can see the connection and i like it yeah that I mean that and when and at the end of the day that's what makes i would say that's arguably the most important aspect yeah. of a portrait uh specifically a family portrait yeah. is creating that connection and you can obviously tell that they're yeah. they're pretty stoked on each other and they're really happy so yeah um, i love the middle daughter like her movement and like just how they like i love it yeah it's just genuine Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, super cool. Um, Mario, congrats again on, you know, getting this paid gig. Um, that's really exciting. And thank you so much for sharing. This is probably one of the better of your photos I've seen. So, so kudos to you. Um, I'm glad you're taking educate all this education seriously. Cause I, I can see an improvement in your work over the past year since I've known you. So good stuff, dude. Good that's stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Going on. Uh, this comes from an anonymous photographer. Ooh, Okay. okay. So I love that they're using light. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think dun, it dun, could dun. be better balanced. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, I know. <laughs> um, I feel like it could be better balanced to give the ambiance of this yep. bar because that you know yep. this bar is like dope. Like, I can see that. Um, but I want to see the ambiance of it, ambiance of it more and i feel like the light is overpowering the vibes that this place gives um that's immediately in my head i'm like this is good but it could be great um yeah. the white the white hallway to the right is mm -hmm. throwing me off crop um, it tighter. i know yeah crop it tighter um which then you're gonna cut out the chandelier i get it um 
So then you're, you know what I mean? So these are all things in my head. I'm like, eh, you know, um, to me, I don't know if you would have been allowed to do this, but that sliding ladder back there, I'd have had them on that real quick. Um, <laughs> and I would have shot them the, from that hallway down, depending on what's behind you, because then you could get all of the bottles and like not have, you know what I mean? You shoot it as shallow as possible, light them, and then like use those bottles to tell it, you know what I mean? Like you have so much opportunity in this place that I can see, which is why I'm saying this, but like, even if you cluttered your foreground a little bit with some bottles, you know what I mean? And then lit them and had the bottles a little bit lit, then you have the background behind you. Like that just takes it to a whole new level. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't absolutely. know who, yeah, like I don't know who submitted this, but like to you, I'm like, I see what you're capable of when I see this shot. So then right. I challenge you, like, this is a good shot, but you, I, like, I can tell from this, you, you are capable of greatness, sir or madam, or, <laughs> or, you know, non-binary royalty, whatever you identify, you are exactly. capable of greatness. <laughs> so I'm going to say, like, take, take it up a notch, you know, um, this is a yeah. great photo, but those are the things that I see immediately. Yeah, I would agree. I think, um, we made a little, just balancing the exposures a little bit more. So taking down the light on on the softbox or whatever they used um and then kind of oh uh bringing up the ambient light a little bit more as a result um another thing i would potentially do as well is the light seems as far as color temperature is concerned seems a little unbalanced so maybe throw like a quarter cto or half probably a half might be too much but maybe like a quarter cto to warm up that light a little bit to match that that warm light in the um in the uh the hall in the room um, because you can tell in this photo that there is additional light being used. And as a result, it feels a little photoshoppy because of that. Um, so that's probably what I would do. I would also maybe uh, change the direction of the light a little bit. It, it's, it's borderline flat. The light for me, it's, bo it's, it's not that flat, but it's, it's kind of teetering on the edge of it. So that's something else I would do. Um, and then just watch the highlights. You know, his shirt is really blown out kind of near his shoulder and his, his bicep a little bit. So that might be something I'm looking out for. And then I would also I potentially. Think his expression could be better too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He definitely could do that. He's I do like his flat. pose. I do like his pose though. Yeah. His, his, pose is great. Yeah, his expression is a little, eh, but um, yeah, this is a cool, this is a really cool spot. I feel like maybe like I've been here at, or something. It's just one of those. I want to photograph in there. Yeah, super cool spot. But all right, well, thank you, Very anonymous cool. photographer. Um, go ahead and moving on. Uh, this next photographer comes from another regular submitter, Josh Adams. Okay. Let's see here. What does Josh have to say about this image? Um, nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Got it. Um. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna say it. The Apple Watch is killing me. Yes. You, yeah. I don't know. But don't I, know. you're an, you're a watch snob too. But like, I yes. am. I am. And Correct. You, yeah, it's just. I was gonna just, say his unbuttoned sh shirt sleeve is bothering me. That also bothers me too. Yeah, I saw that. That's that was secondary. I'm for like, me. he needs to lock that up or roll it up. Yeah. One of the two. Yep. <laughs> um. And, and these are nitpicky details, right? Um, but yeah, I, the other thing is this feels very staged. Um, yeah, yeah. Very staged, which I know, like, obviously I know it is, but the goal is to not make it feel that way, at least in my mind. Um, so if mm -hmm. this is like what you want, I would almost have them, like, so I've had couples walk straight over me. Like, so I'm laying on the ground and I'm like, all right, look at each other and walk. And like, the first one, first pass is weird. And I'm like, no, 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 do it again. And by the end, they're cracking up laughing because they're like feeling stupid as heck. But like then the laughs and the looks are authentic. Um, right. The the execution is similar, but then it's it's more authentic feel and they'll feel that photo more. Um, okay. So that's where I would say is like coax them into a more authentic feeling because I see this and I'm like, that is very planted right where you are. Um, make them feel that moment again instead of just see it um thank you for not putting that tree on her head yeah um, that was that was good framing there 
the framing. So <laughs> well Josh, played. Is, Josh is watching this. Did I see that? Uh, yeah, you did shoot this with the uh, this new Nikon Z8. How are you liking that thing, buddy? Nice. Um, yeah, that that's a, it's a cool camera. I I, uh, I did a I did a wedding the other day with a a guy named Mark who's a member in this group. And he got his Z8. He sh- he second shot for me because I needed help. And he got his Z8 literally like an hour before we left. <laughs> and, <laughs> Let me figure uh, out my settings on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was funny. Uh, but the thing, the Z8 looks awesome. You're are you sh- you're a Sony shooter, right, though, Megan? Right? Or, I, am. I am. Okay, I'm, yep. I'm sorry, but it's okay. It's all right. No, I I shot Nikon before I shot Sony, so I still have love for Nikon. I I miss my F200 uh, or my 200 F2. Dude, that that lens was gorgeous, and I still miss it. In the 58, Nikon 58, yes. those are the two that I still, to this day, like my heart hurts a little bit that I don't yep. have those in my arse. And I yep. could use the adapter, but it's not the same. It's it's not the same. Oh, so, yeah. Nikon, I, I still give you kudos. You've got some good stuff going on. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I really don't have much else to add to it um, other than my initial thing, but that's just more of a personal thing. I, I just, you know, I I have a really hard, like, time with someone like investing so much time and thought and effort into wearing a nice suit and getting all dressed up and then oh i got a, i got an apple watch on it's like dude <laughs> but you just um, go without it for that day yeah um the other thing uh, yeah i think maybe i would have liked to try to maybe see a little bit more of his ring i think that would have been really cool um because yeah. you can clearly see hers but maybe if he just turned his hand a little bit this way you could see a little bit more help add to that story but um More yeah other than that too. yeah that's it but yeah. <laughs> other than that though uh yeah thank you so much really appreciate uh you submitting that josh with your super sweet nikon z8 the best camera system in the world so uh thank, thank you God. so much all right go <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh this photo from another regular sandra miltenberger um wow this is this is solid if that's if that's truly the sky and you did Astro with this, dude, I bow to you because that's impressive. It looks like it it could be. I'm guessing is it I would get like is it a two two photo shot cuz there's no way that the fog stays that well fine if well, you do can. a long it, exposure you, for the stars. Well, no, if you use, Oh, with, if, with the flash. Yeah, with the flash. Rear yes. flash. Rear, exactly. rear curtain sync. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah, so she placed a GT200 in the building with a Magmon orange gel. Um, it had it shining outside um, and then sprayed some atmosphere aerosol behind the couple. So abs- she absolutely could have done that yeah. where she uh, sprayed the this. Yeah. yeah, or I mean, you technically could even do this with front curtain as well. Um, it would just be, I think, a little bit better with a rear curtain. But yeah, super amazing. I, I do wonder if this is a single exposure. Um, Sandra, I know you're watching this, um, or you were earlier. So if if you could let us know if this was either a single shot or a composite, either way, it's great. Um, to either me, either way, does, it's great. Like, yeah, yeah, it does look like a single shot. Um, my only my only one critique is it looks like it's maybe just slightly off center. Um, yeah. Yeah, like maybe bring in the crop just a little bit to from the left in. Yep. Um, yep. I would cool. also. I. I mean, this is yeah, this is a great shot. I. I would be nitpicky since your right side is pretty much black. I would almost be inclined to make your other your left side at least the grass black, um, just because it feels a little heavy to the one side. Like I. I want to. Yeah. Be yeah. Good. You know what I mean? Oh uh, um, yeah, so I can see. So if you're silhouetting the yeah. one side, you see what I'm saying? Yep, um, I do see that. Mm-hmm. So I I want both to be consistent. I know that you've got that cool, um, you know, stone work going on on the left side, but at least darken down the grass would be my suggestion. If not, darken the whole that side a bit just because of the other side being so dark, or lighten that side up uh, right. just for for even. Even even this sake. Yep. No, I would agree. That is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty obvious. Yeah, definitely burn that a little bit more. I think it'll be a little, yep. a little stronger. Of an the image. other. Yep. And the other thing is, which I mean, like, I can't. I would never say, obviously, like, I can't compete with this at this point. But like, if you wanted to copy the left side and flip it, and then put it on the other side to mirror. Ooh. You know, just just your just your um the stone, like the not wall. not the sky. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, but get that wall on the other side. Again, you're going to pull them in with that. And yeah, I know you're using Photoshop at that point, but like, I'm not opposed to that when it makes the image stronger. Um, and I think that would make your image stronger because then you've got that symmetry back on your side. Yeah, that especially is, with it being uh, weighted. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion, actually. That's why. That's why. That's why I bring you along to these things, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll come up with a good idea. Just hang with me long enough. <laughs> super, super cool. Well, um, Sandra didn't comment, so maybe she had to step out for a minute. But either way, she'll I know she'll watch the replay. So um, thank you so much for submitting this. Really, really cool image. image. And I, I love the, the orange. It was a very good choice using the orange to play against the blue in yep, the sky. Color. Really yeah. solid choice. Okay. So. Great. Okay, cool. We're about a little more than halfway through, actually. Um, yeah, we're more than halfway through. This next photo comes from photographer Carrie Arno. Carrie, Carrie, Harry. I don't know. It's like it's Sherry, like the original song, but it just reminds me of that song. Okay. So, I don't know. It's a good shot. It's, it's technically a good shot. I think there's a lot of opportunity that's there, though. She's laughing. I'm not. <laughs> oh, she's probably laughing at your singing. She's like, well, she's yeah, like, you're yeah. terrible. Um, I am terrible. So I don't know. But... I don't know what that archway is, like right to the right of that where you have her. But I yeah. would be really inclined to see you put her in that, especially mm. with this dramatic sky, because if you get low and you have her in the middle and you're shooting up up and that sky is behind her in that you know in that archway with her and you've got the architecture again i'm a sucker for symmetry and architecture so if you're going to center weight which you've center weighted her in give her at the strength of you know those two columns on either side like i really think then you've got you know what i mean you've got something special especially with that dramatic sky yeah um and and i do i know you photoshopped somebody out because she's lit um, so I, like, I feel like your lighting could be more dramatic for the drama in this photo. You've got a badass sky, like give a little bit more angle to her on that light so that she has the same drama that fits this, the scene, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Those would sense. be my goals. But I love the movement. I'm a big fan of the movement. I love the drama, but those are, those are my takeaways from yeah, I, I kind of like the the use of the negative space in this case. Um, you know, it's extreme, but, you know, there's clouds and there's texture and there's detail in the sky, so I yep. think it works. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The light, yeah, kind of watching those highlights a little bit on her, um, you know, on her dress. It's a little flat, maybe bring a little bit more direction to that light. But it's also kind of got that, like, Hollywood flat light kind of feel to it. You know, like that that paparazzi kind of look, or that that Hollywood documentary yep. style. Um, so I actually think it works for the way, for the tone of the image and the way she processed it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely tells a story and gives a setting. Uh, you know, it it gives a, a sense of place, which is really unique and really cool. The only other the other thing that I notice now, I'm like I'm staring at it again. Um, I would put her either in the middle window or put her over in the empty space. Yeah. Because her in that third window a little doesn't, distracting. you ain't like, the back yeah, room. like put her in that empty space and then she's going to have a frame again. That right. like, that would help you. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. But it's a great shot. It's a great shot. It was well executed. I, I completely agree. Um, always love seeing your work, Carrie. Um, your stuff, I've been following you and your stuff is getting progressively better. So thank you again for being a regular contributor and, and sharing these images. Um, okay, moving on. We let's go ahead and move to uh, this photo, and this comes from Austin mm -hmm. Alvarez. Shot natural light with a Canon R six. Okay. So I right off the bat, this gives me almost a Cliff Mountainer vibe because mm -hmm. I love yep. his use of natural light. Um, I would bring the whole entire thing down though, exposure wise. That's exactly and what really I was going to say. Because yep. it's hot on that window, and even her highlights a little hot. So I would take hot, this whole yeah. thing down. Yeah. Um, but this is a beautiful shot, and I think if you take that exposure down just a hair, 
you're going to see that drama the way you want it. And this is beautiful. Um, I love um, um, Yeah. I'm yeah. not like, I'm not mad at this image at all. That, and I would clean up the electrical outlet underneath the window. Cause that's a quick fix. Um, oh yeah. I didn't even see just that. Because, just because it distracts me. Um, Good call. But yeah. But otherwise yeah. those would be my takeaways on that. Yeah. That was exactly what I was going to say was, um, the it's just it's like one stop too exposed like bring it down yeah. the whole image is a whole stop it's gonna you're gonna expose better for the highlights on the window frame um the light on her face yeah. isn't gonna be as hot and um it's gonna make it's gonna make the image a little bit more dramatic and this is kind of an mm -hmm. example of an image where i don't think you necessarily need to see all the detail in the shadows um like especially okay. on her back you know um, mm -hmm. I, I think leaving a little bit of mystery is, um, can, can definitely benefit you here. Um, I, my question, Megan, how do you feel about her pose? I I'm, I'm kind of 50, 50. I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily hate the pose, but that elbow, I'm not sure. I love it. Love it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I almost would like personally, if I was going to pose her in this exact same spot, I would have that hand on her hip and give a little bit more mm -hmm. definition in the hip line and then let her hold those flowers down. <laughs> let me stand up. Like I am, I am the least, you know, you know, majestic female out there, but like <laughs> if, she, if she's, you know, got a little bit of hip and she's got them down like this, you know, um, Rock I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, you know, you know, um, but yeah, like to get a little bit more curve within, um, with it instead of just that straight with the lock it almost right. like that almost makes me feel like she's locked up mm -hmm. um but i'm not like it's not the worst pose i've seen by any stretch um no, 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 no. but yeah i think i think like i think hand on the hip give some curve give that that line to her it would take it up a notch a little bit okay plus then you've got highlights coming in on that arm still from the window so again you're giving depth to that shot by giving her another highlight spot. So, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Okay. Well, Austin, thank you. Hopefully you take some of that stuff into consideration. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this next image. This next photo <laughs> comes from photographer, Mark Curry. He's the one I told you about who uh, second shot for me the other day. Oh, nice. Okay. Full circle. Um, yeah. <laughs> what a great moment. This is freaking, this is, I have so many like, yeah. Yeah, and this he wants great, like man. a he wants like a harsh critique, like anything you can you can suggest, any post production, whatever. This is fantastic. Like this is one. Okay, so if this was my image, I would be mad at myself because I missed a fearless opportunity, in and my what's opinion. That? And what's that? Um, because you've lost half of the bridesmaid that's like kicking out on her. Um, if you're going like one, I can tell you're in a getting ready room or a bedroom or, you know what I mean? Like this is a cluttered AF situation. You're trying to keep it on them. I get that. Um, but you've cut half of your person. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, I'm like, dude, like I, I crop too hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then you lose some of the bride too. So yep. there's so many, when I, when I look at this, I see so many angles that I would want to shoot this at. Um, if you're going to shoot it head on like this, you need all of it. Like you need all the body in both of them. Um, and I honestly would have taken a step. And again, I don't know what this, this room looked like, but I would have taken a step to the left and got down just a hair to where I could get the profile of the bride as well. Because right now the bride has no emotion that she's not telling any story, but you know, she has to be laughing right now because she's got a foot on her back. Like, Guaranteed she's laughing or at least right. making a face. Yeah. So like, I want to see that because then you're telling more story with it. So I would yep. take that step and try to get her profile and then get the, the bridesmaid as well. So you're kind of more like head on with them. So two profiles. Um, the other part of me, I would love to shoot this in front of the bride shooting down over her shoulder to get the bridesmaid's foot and all of that going on, but then have the bride's face out of focus, but still okay. have her emotion in it. 
because then I think that that would be a good second shot. I would want the full on first, but then I would run really fast to try to get that as well. That that would be my rotation. Um, yeah, no, and then I am. Um... Dork and me, yeah, like I just I love this. I love this, but that would be my my movement pattern in that because I know it goes so fast. Um, right, right. But yeah, like this is this is a moment that could win a fearless award if you shoot it correctly. I mean, and I and I would potentially burning again, burning down the background just a bit to get a little bit of the distraction away. You wouldn't want to burn it all the way because you'd lose context, but just to take some of it down. Yeah, no, and I agree with everything you said, and I, I, I would think my biggest um, critique would be, yeah, I would love to see the bride's face here. You know, I mean, obviously, what's been done has been done. You can't fix that, but I think that would make such a stronger image. And you know, as photographers, we kind of like we have to ride like a line of, okay, well, how much involvement do we want to have? I think in this situation, like if this was happening for a minute, all up in the business. Yeah. I I would, I would almost say to the bride, like, let's say the bride's name is Susie. Be like, Hey Susie, what's she doing back there? Right. And she'd be like, well, you know, and then you can kind of capture that moment. So you're not like saying, Hey, go ahead and look back and make a funny face. But you're kind of like, as Cliff Montner says, you're kind of setting the stage for the moments to happen. Yes. Yep. Um, so very cool though, Mark. And you clearly um, had time because she's just starting that. Yeah. She's at the top stream. Exactly. So she was going to be doing that for a minute. You had a moment. So yeah, definitely. Which I mean, it doesn't feel like you have a moment in the moment. <laughs> You're like, oh, right. shit, I gotta take this now. Um, right. But yeah, I love yeah. this. Like, I just see so much, like you saw it and that's like huge kudos because half the battle is like seeing the moment in the, in the first place. So yeah, yeah definitely. This is awesome. definitely um well cool um love loving the comments guys yep some great photos for sure we're almost to the end here we only got uh i think three more photos so if you have anything else to ask to megan or anything oh looks like my camera died um not sure Hello. why oh there we go it just went to sleep for some reason so anyway okay we're gonna go ahead and move on this next photo comes from uh an anonymous photographer um oh another anonymous anonymous there's so many people today that just like don't or shy i guess I, yeah. Yeah. They claim your images um <laughs> so right off the bat i would move the chair and the table in the front okay oh, because they're distracting um they, they're not serving a purpose for me so i would get rid of them um like actually you physically to move them or just i would them. physically move them okay yeah i would either crop it tighter or just if, if, if you want that crop and i just Pull them out of the way. Um, I have no shame. I move crap all the time. Fair um, enough. But yeah, so that would be my, I would be like, either move it or get in closer or like whatever you got to do, get that out. Um, I don't feel like they're connected. Um, I would like to, I, and I can tell they're an older couple. So a lot of times like it, it's a different dynamic with older couples versus like, really young couples, I feel like, my experience. I don't know if you, your mileage may vary. Um, I don't know if you feel that, Sean, but sometimes it's like, I feel like the older couples are kind of tough to get to be like, just love on each other. And like, now nah, we're good. <laughs> but, yeah. um, <laughs> so like, I, I would like to see him, like if she's looking off, I want him looking at her or vice versa or some kind of like connection. So I know that they're, you know, there. Um, I like the leading lines in this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily like. I feel like you could have u- utilized them a little bit better if you would have gotten lower, um, and if oh, you angle yeah. to the corner just a hair, um, then you're really leading into them. If you're just a tad lower, um, okay. Use those lines to your advantage and tell the story. You know, I like draw me straight to it. I think honestly, the whole left side is kind of distracting. Um. It's not really giving me much. I don't okay. really understand the, the purpose of that head. <laughs> um, I know you're wanting like the ambiance of the location, but if that's mm-hmm. the case, then again, move the stuff out of the front, really highlight the, the location. Cause right now I just feel like it was a wide angle shot that like, I'm not feeling, you know what I mean? The connection of all the pieces to it. Cause you're seeing Fair the parking enough. lot. Um, that, that another thing too, is like, if you get low and you shoot higher and use your leading lines, you're also, then eliminating the cars in the parking lot because yep. you're immediately gone on that. And I love, I love that. Um, 
the less distraction, the less stuff to get in the way of me reading the photo is important. So, and the cars don't add anything. So, get high, drop them out. Fair Those enough. Would be my suggestion. Okay. Awesome. Well, so just to provide you some context to this image, uh, this is actually mine. Um, oh, snap. I'm <laughs> Dude. <laughs> There you go. I like to I like to throw in a curveball, like some photos. Every, every I like to throw in one of mine anonymously uh, to hear some feedback from the critiquer, but also some photos I know like could use some feedback, you know, maybe to spark sure. a little discussion. Uh, and I I actually I love all those 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 things that you told me. Uh, I, I the cars right. are the big thing for me. Um, I actually left one of the flash in at the top right of the corner. I don't know if you can see that just the tip of it. Um, yep. <clears throat> so yep. I, I'm surprised you didn't point that out, but um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to throw a little wrench in it for you, but yeah, you know, I really liked this. Um, the reason why I left so much in the left side of the frame is I really liked that bowl head and I really wanted yeah. to incorporate it into the photo a little bit and just kind of do like an environmental portrait of where they got married. Cause this was an actually, this is actually their reception area. Um, so I wanted nice. to kind of leave it a little context, but, uh, I agree about the sure. table. Actually, I should have moved that. Um, but I'm lazy, so I didn't. And I can see, <laughs> I can see how it hurt me a little bit in the long run. So. <laughs> yeah, but no, cool. it's a great shot, but yeah, like those would be my, my suggestions, but you could totally yeah. throw them out, dude. You can totally throw them out. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I really do appreciate your feedback. Cause, um, yeah, this is one of those images I was like, you know what? Like, I think it could have been stronger, um, let's, let's yeah. see what Megan has to say about it. <laughs> oh man. You lost your cool. camera just so you know. I sure did. It was um, switched over. Yeah. It keeps switching over and I'm wondering if, um, I need to just change the battery on it. it or maybe it's actually, you know, it might be overheating. I'm not really sure what's going on, but, um, let's just, yeah, open the battery cover and see if that helps. Okay. Well, thank you so much yeah. for your critique. Really appreciate it. We got three more photos. Absolutely. This next last, this next this next photo comes from Scott Tibbles. Um, he shot. He sh this is a five light setup, apparently. Um, you can see it because you got yeah. two on the bottom, one in the back, one pointing at them, and then one overhead to light them in the front. Yeah, it looks right? like so three gelled upright or uplights, three gelled uplights, one kicker and one main. Yep, yep, yep. That's fine. Dude, his sneakers right off the bat, I saw him. I'm like, yes, sir. This guy's got style. I'm yeah. a big fan of the dunks. Let's Love go. It. They're either Jordans or dunks. I can't see the top, so I can't, like, I'm not good enough to identify directly. But I don't know enough about shoes, so I'm just going to call them Nikes because they have a Nike logo on them. <laughs> there we go. No, I, I like them. I like them. Um, okay, so that aside, my nerding out. Um I love this. This is fun. They both have great expressions. Um, clearly you did, you went above and beyond to make sure that the, the lighting aesthetic was on point, which I love. Um, nitpicky. I hate that the cement is two different colors. So like your foreground cement is like yellow and yeah. then like they're standing on like a darker one. And I know that a lot of time you have no control over that. But I, that's something I would probably like color in and post just to like even it out. Um, mm -hmm just putting in a color layer and then matching that just because it, it makes my eye twitch after you've done so much work to like make everything else about this picture be like awesome. That was me yeah. for a second. Right. Um, you shot this perfectly cause you've frozen everything. Like, yeah. Execution wise, this is great. So that would be my nitpick is like figure out the, the bottom, the bottom tiny, tiny bit, but um, no, this is great. This is great. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think for me, what makes the image is like the expression. Um, yeah, and expressions are great. Hers is fantastic, especially. Right. And I think with these, these champagne shots, it can be really hard to like get like a fun expression. Like sometimes people are like worried that they're going to like get wet or they're making, or they're so focused on trying to get the stream right that they're like they look constipated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> And she's yeah. obviously having a very good time and I absolutely love it. Yes. And yeah, it's, it's super cool. Um, this is fantastic. I like it. Definitely. I think I would have maybe liked oh. to see a little more illumination on the, um, on the champagne itself. The so maybe, yeah. But mm -hmm. what, what, what were you going to say? He's got his phone in his pocket. Does he? Oh, uh, I think. The, oh yeah. Is it a phone He's or car keys? Bulge. Okay. I don't know. I feel like it's 
a rectangle. I don't know, but whatever it is, it is, it is not a, uh, a, a thing that should be there. Um, so I am a neurotic person about like making sure stuff is out of their pockets so it doesn't look like that. To me, I'm like, dude, get it out of your pocket. <laughs> so, right. um, but yeah, so that's like just a, a thing for me. So I would be, I'm mindful of that. Um, so that would be a thing for next time. Make sure he's got everything out of his pockets because it just happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah. Well, cool, Scott. I think this is one of the, my the, this is great. One of the uh, the best images okay. I think that you've submitted. So, um, thank yeah, you for yeah, thank you for submitting it. Um, okay, we got two more. This Ooh. next photo oh. comes from photographer Anthony, or right, mm -hmm. Anthony? Okay. Yes, Anthony. Just Anthony. Yep. Just Anthony. <laughs> just Anthony. Just He's Anthony. It's like Kobe. You know, you just need one name. He's like Madonna, it's like a sure. it's like one. Madonna. Just Anthony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so first off, I know how hard it is sometimes to photograph on golf courses because people think it's like a great idea to like get married at a golf course sometimes. I'm like, oh, it's so hard to photograph on a golf course. Right, um, and you're like, yeah, golf course wedding, so like unique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like awesome. Um, so that being said, I love their motion. I love the motion. I would have gotten lower because that golf course is not that cute. There's no golf course on the planet that's good for a wedding photo, quite frankly. Um, but I would drop down and use that um, that bridge as leading lines and utilize that awesome sky. Um, yes, hundred percent. Because the sky is dope. Like yeah. so, use, and his head's getting a little use lost. Use those in the trees. lines. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so you're you're. Cleaning up your your lines on your couple, you're giving all the vibes where they need to go. Um, I can tell you used a flash, um, but it is very head on. Um, and I think getting I, like might even be on camera. I'm not like I'm not sure, he but did it's say a very he head on off flash. camera flash. But that's all he said. Okay, okay. Um, so I personally would choose to drop and then get that camera like that flash. Um, almost like I would almost have my lighting assistant is that oh okay um I would almost have them up on the right hand corner of that bridge like that lower part of it I would have them stand right. on that and like kind of go up and over with it and make it very dynamic to be aimed at the bride's face primarily um and then just let it do its thing I would lower the exposure to really hone in on those um the colors in the sky because I think you missed an opportunity to really pull the colors out of that sky. You might be able to pull them back and post even now if you yeah. went back in with the raw image. Um, but I think you missed an opportunity there. So get low, use the bridge as your leading lines and really hone in on that sky and get the off camera flash off to an angle um, to really give it a vibe because you've, you've got a lot of, you've got all the pieces there. Now we put them together to really make that next step. In the exactly. Picture. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly, it is above me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's certainly not a bad image by any means. It's actually a really strong image. Um, it's just those little things are going to elevate it and bring it yeah. to the next level. You know, those highlights are a little distracting. So using a little bit, a little bit higher flash power to help underexpose those highlights in the sky is going to make yeah. it more dramatic. And it's going to, um, you know, make your, you know, people, you know, one thing I've learned from watching like WPPI critiques is, you know, your, your eye generally always goes to the brightest part of the scene, right? right. In this case, the brightest part is the, the upper the right, top, top right of the, the frame. And that is very distracting. So, um, but by making those small changes, you would have a super dope, nasty photo as the kids say. So, yeah. Yeah. You go from, from a good photo to a, a, a great photo. Exactly. Um, Cause this is a good photo you you've got your you've got your tools so now we just take it to the next level absolutely so. absolutely well super cool anthony yeah you're, you're absolutely welcome thank you so much for submitting this please feel free to continue to submit regularly um we would love to see some more of your work um okay and then our fun. yeah our last photo for the evening comes from daniela gomez and she's the one that i actually interviewed last week i don't know if you caught that but uh she's nice. a very inspirational story there um, but anyway, yeah, here is her, her submission. All right. So first off, I love, I love this. Like there's a lot going on. Um, I, 
I'm looking up, I'm like, as we've gotten a lot further into this, I'm becoming more nitpicky. Like I know <laughs> I'm in my vibe now. So I'm sorry you were last, Daniela. <laughs> but, um, I would center her up with the fountain. I'm sure you wanted to show the flowers behind her. Um, but I would center her, center her up with that because the entire image is off now and nothing, like you had a play on the symmetry, but nothing works for me right now because you're not centered in the pillars. You're not centered with the fountain. So like, it doesn't feel, I feel a little disjointed. Um, I also want to know what the heck is going on in that pillar on the right hand side. Like the lighting in there is weird. Like that's distracting me. I don't know why, but like there's that pillar, like the shadows on the, the, the back, like archway. I'm like, what is going on in there? Um, I can tell that you have that flash potentially behind that pillar to the right to get that okay. light backlit on her. Um, it almost looks like it's on the floor actually. <sighs> um yeah point it up i'm pretty sure that's what's going on or, or maybe it's on like on the fountain edge behind her you think um it could be yeah it, it could definitely be be there as well um like but then but if you're looking at the shadow though actually on the on the left of the the model you can see there's a shadow casted being cast from that little round part on the fountain which means to me yep. that the flash is probably on the floor um yeah yeah. So my so my initial yeah. So like the only thing okay, so this is me like being nitpicky, but the the hot spot the of the flash is almost like on the crotch, which mm -hmm. makes me kind of sad. Like I would burn that down at least. You know what I mean to like cuz her belly should be the point. But like that that triangle of light right underneath her belly throws me off. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Mhm. Mm a little distracting. It's directing me. Yeah, it's directing me to a place that I don't I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. um, her expression is beautiful. That dress is gorgeous. Your location is stunning. Um, if you're gonna backlight her, I would genuinely have put her in the center of the of the fountain and put it on the edge of the fountain. I mean, and done it that way. Um, so here's kind of my but yeah. Here's my problem with that, or not necessarily problem, but the challenge is. If you put her in the center, I, I can see why Daniela did it. Because if you put her in the center, then the flowers and the fountain are going to run right through the back of her head, right? And then not if you get lower. But then you, but then you run the risk of the chandelier being there. So it's 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 kind of like True. a catch twenty two. It's it's hard. It's challenging. It's yeah. really challenging. Um, yeah. And I think maybe you're. I think maybe that would probably ultimately be the best situation is to get like really really low. And just like almost yeah. frame it, almost so put her head in the in, this, in, in the, the ceiling, ceiling area. Yeah, in the br the brick. Yeah. That's how I would do it. Mm -hmm. Um, you still yeah. kind of run the risk of the chandelier and the fountain kind of running through the center, but maybe if you like were to bring her a little bit more forward, that could be a solution. Um, I don't know how much mm -hmm. room she had behind her. Like I don't know if there's a wall there or whatever, yeah. but yeah, I, I can yeah. see why she did it. But I can also exactly. Get be, I'm a little distracted by how it's off symmetry. Um, yep. And I mean, we're armchairing all of these, you know, because we're not right. there. We don't know the dynamics of any of these shoots. So like, definitely take it with a grain of salt, um, yeah. all of you. But, um, but yeah, like, those are the things that stand out to me. This is a gorgeous location, and she's beautiful. And I, I'm like, dude, this is fantastic image. Um, yeah. But, really? yeah, I just, like, I, I want those lines to lead me to it. You know what I mean? Right now, I just feel like I'm a little, I'm a little off. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, the only other problem I see with this is that it was shot in a Sony. But other than that, you know, great photo. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't all be Nikon shooters. Yeah. I know, I know. You can't all have the the glorious uh, experience of, of yeah, yeah. using real equipment. <laughs> well, um, oh, Daniela, thank you so much for submitting. Um, that is the end of the image critiques for, for May. Uh, Megan, I am super stoked that you joined us. Um, some of this feedback that you gave was absolutely phenomenal. Um, if people want to follow your work, where would be the best place for them to do that? Oh, man. um, so Instagram, I'm, I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, my wedding work is generally on at studio two, two photography. Okay. Um, and then my senior, my senior stuff is on at rev underscore photo. Um, okay. I think, 
Hold on. Let me let me make sure I didn't just lie about that. Um, no worries. No worries. Because I just I just made that. Oh, I lied. I did. Um, <laughs> I'll put them in here. Um, so it's at studio. Perfect. And at Rev Studio. I can spell it. It would be great. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Yeah. Okay. And if you so guys. Two. Perfect. Yep. I see it right there. Awesome. Def definitely give her a follow, guys. I'm sure she would appreciate it. If you submitted a photo and we gave you some critiques on it on maybe how to improve, I would love to see maybe some of your edits. So post a photo in the group so we could talk yeah. about it a little bit. Um, it's always really interesting to kind of see what you've done with the feedback we've given you. So please, please share. Um, we're going to be doing this again next month uh, for our June image critiques. But once again, Megan, you were absolutely phenomenal. Um, I am going to announce the winner of the uh, the free canvas from ProPrint. So if I'm gonna, so if I if you hear your name, please send me a message on Facebook, and I'll go ahead and make sure I get that canvas out to you. Um, so randomly selected winner uh, is Anthony, like the Madonna, just hey, Anthony Madonna. <laughs> yeah. So please reach out to me. Uh, I'll get that out to you as soon as I can. Um, once again, Megan, you're awesome. It's great to see you again. I will. Um, yeah. Well, we'll keep in touch, okay? Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Take it easy, everyone. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Yeah.